You know, I was thinking about something yesterday. And I had time, I thought on it in depth about a lot of things and listening to the Lord. Somebody began to give me a, that, that wind was nice. It's, it's symbolic of what's happening. I don't know if you did that or that just happened. But I know this. Somebody had, has took it upon themselves to post videos of something that I've tried to say for years. And I couldn't say it until I, I would try to say it and try to say it until I saw it. And they showed pictures from World War II. And it would show people standing on a certain street, soldiers, German soldiers, and then at checkpoints. And then it would fade to modern times and show the same street. And they were gone. And then it would show American soldiers occupying certain streets in Germany or France or wherever it was. And then it would show modern times the same street and it's peaceful and everything's calm. And a generation has to ask themselves, how did it get that way? How could it be that you could walk on the street today of those same places where Nazi soldiers stood? How could it have gotten so bad and then show modern time and it's all gone? And I'd try to say that over the years. How could it have happened? Especially from someone who is, to say he's less than intimidating would have been an understatement. Some little Nazi demoniac screaming that I think my grandmother and her sister would have beat the hell out of him. And I know every sixth grade southern boy in school could have when I grew up. But how could it have gotten to that place? It's because complacency set in in the church, in the body of Christ. And they quit standing up for each other. And they quit saying things to defend each other. And they let them come for this group, that group, that group, that group until they came for them. And I watched those pictures, the same wall, the same street, the same sidewalk. German soldiers standing there with their weapons. And then it fades to now. And the street is clean as if it never happened. How did it happen? Why could we, why do we look back on that and say, how did that happen? How could we have given a less than intimidating man the power to mutilate and kill six million Jews? How could we have given him such power that when they rolled those Jewish people in on trains, cars, they took some of the infants and against the walls? And yet now the street is clear. And I begin to wonder what would it look like in that many years from today? What would our pictures of then and now look like? Would it show the twisted, confused look of children that are confused in their genders, that have had genital mutilation? in our time and show people in Congress with wigs, a man with beard stubble and lipstick trying to run a nation founded on the principles of God. Would that be our now pictures? And then it shows the, this would be the then and then it shows the now. 50, 60 years from now, 70. Then they show the now, then. And they show these confused pictures of generations that lost their own mind. 
And I look at it 60, 70 years from now and say, how did that happen? Will they show pictures of now of children's playgrounds, of 30 children playing and then three playing? Because genocide has taken place. What will the then and now from our generation look like? Will we look back and say, how did that happen? Because the church grew complacent and the salt of the earth quit being salty anymore. And they spoke out against nothing. And they ordained LGBTQ candidates in the pulpits and taught our children that you can be any gender you imagine. Will it be that abortion on demand claims and shows empty playgrounds in the days to come? Will it be? What will be our then and now? We see what was then and what's now from World War II. It's because you let a few crazy, demonic-possessed people take the God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The church has to rise up within its ranks and speak. Every government entity only fears one thing, the church and what the church will say. So even now, gag orders are trying to be arranged upon the prophets and church leaders and pastors who dare speak out for righteousness. What do you advocate for? The speaking out of the church. Open the Bible and speak the truth. Just speak the truth. How is it that we think that a nation founded on Judeo-Christian principles from the written word of the living God, why do we think you can take that away and implement every other belief that's destroyed every nation in the earth and think it won't destroy this one? The church must speak. And it's as simple as Nancy Reagan said. Just say no. Well, church, you have to preach this message. No. Well, church, you have to shut your doors. No. Well, church, you have to do that. No. No. What can be done? We are standing on the cusp of our then and nows. Speak the truth. Do it in love, but speak the truth. And say we're not willing to let the morphing of children's minds take place. We can speak the truth to them. And it's not hate speech. It's love speech. Do you understand this war has to be fought in the spirit? And it has to be won there. Change a man's heart, you change everything about them. Come on, y'all. I don't know if I said anything that stirred your heart or not. But things stir mine. And I begin to think of our then and now. What will it look like? If you could have seen the, the soldiers occupying Germany stand there with their helmets and their rifles looking at passes and checkpoints. And, and if you breathed wrong, you died. And then the now picture of the same street and they're gone. And you say, how did that happen? 
If you let the devil ride in the back seat of your car, soon he'll want to drive. If you let him come home with you, he'll bring his suitcase. You need to remember that. Are we true believers or are we not? That's really what it's coming down to. We were listening to that Phil Keggy song earlier, True Believer. It's the most powerful song and the song Survivor from the viewpoint of a child being aborted. It's the strongest things. What is that song that there was a, a well-known group in the 90s saying it's time we get back to the basics of life. Songs that were prophetic. What would Jesus do? Big tent revival. In these days, we have to start thinking about when the next generation, 70 years from now, thumbs through our photo album. And the young faces here today are old looking. And 70 years from now, you and I in heaven, what will we leave in our photo album for them to look back and say, how did that happen? Because the church remained silent. and chewed on each other and did not accept anything God sent because it didn't look like what they thought it should because it didn't sound like what they thought it should sound like oh we're in this box they'll say religion has us in this box why do you want to get out of the box? We have the freedom of the box to run in. We can run from this corner to this corner to this. We can even run around in a circle and put a circle in a square box. God has given us real freedom in our religion. Surely we don't. Why would you desire anything outside this box? And the church says, oh, yes, we have it made. The problem with putting God in a box is that he can be picked up and set on a shelf in a closet somewhere. But when somebody on the other side of the world calls out for God, all of a sudden he leaves your box. How can the creation ever think to box up the creator when he created the box you put him in? What will our photo album look like 70 years from today? The only thing that's going to change this trash that we see happening is a revival. It's got to be a revival within the church. A revival of a shouting Jesus revival. A revival of being born again. A revival of being spirit-filled. A revival of Pentecost happening all over again. A revival of miracles. A revival of laying hands on people and seeing them recover. A revival of welcoming in the pink-haired, purple-haired, nose-pierced, ear-pierced, tongue-pierced, tattooed people. It is time that the church open their doors and say, Come and let us show you the Jesus, the Christ, that will change your life forever and give you a future. That is the only hope for this nation or the world, and we're going to have to get back to it. You do know that bondage, bondage is determined by you, not God. We say, well, God is in control. Was he in control of Nazi Germany? Who determined how deep that bondage went at that time? The church.
And you know, God blessed them, the church and everyone he could, all he could within that box. But until men cried for freedom and called for God to come on the scene, it never changed. Bondage is determined by the person, not the creator. How deep is that bondage if you settle for it? Well, God is in control, isn't he? He would never let that happen. Nazi Germany happened. I thought he'd never let that happen. Do you realize there was chance after chance after chance to stop that before it began? They could have took that little twit and threw him in the ocean somewhere. <laughs> Nobody moved. And when the Jews begged for help, every nation turned them away. Even this one. And Kissinger said during this Six-day war, I believe it was, or the 72 Yom Kippur War, let the Jews bleed. Obama said it's time for the Christians and the Jews to suffer a little bit like the Muslims have over all these years. That may be in a little different words, but how many of you remember that was said? So is it not headed for a box? Listen to me. The only answer is revival. You have to get that in your minds. Talk about the salvation that's in you. Talk about the God who saved you. Talk about the one who delivered you from drugs. Talk about the one who, who caused your life to come from nothing up to everything. Talk about salvation. Talk about the blood. Talk about Jesus dying and rising from the dead after three days and nights. Speak of real happenings, real things. When Jesus came to the earth in the days of Rome, they thought he was coming with a military prowess. He said, nay, I've come to deliver the people from sin. Because sin is what caused it. Can anybody hear my heart today? It must be. What is our photo album going to look like the then and now 70 years from today? It should look like this, a picture of these with their hands up worshiping. And 70 years from now, there's about 50 or 100 joined with them worshiping and say, our then pictures is when it began. Our now pictures is a result of what they started in those days. Nothing can overcome the Holy Ghost. You need to remember that. Nothing can overcome the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because he don't have to breathe, and every man does. God don't require the sustenance of this atmosphere to survive. Men do, and they fade away. Look at the Colosseum in Rome where they dress children up like lambs. They put raw lamb skins over their bodies. And they told them they were playing a game. And they marched them into the Colosseum. And then there they watched in glee as they turned the lions loose on them. How far can a man's heart fall? As far as the church will let it. Speak life. Do you understand? It's a spiritual war. The battle for the soul of a generation. The wars have already been fought and won. But the war in the spirit is being neglected. I don't know. It's pretty quiet in here. I've probably got people on the other side of the camera staring at me like, I'm going to get you, man. 
For what? Preaching the gospel? If the truth be known, yes, that's what they hate. They hate me because I'm a prophet and they can't control what comes out of my mouth because they don't know what's coming and I don't either. They hate me because I believe in a miracle working God. And I believe that God is supernatural. And I think he, and believe he created everything, including you and me. I believe he is our life and the length of our days. So religion hates that. They hate me because I'm a Jew. And identifying my heart as such. Talk about identification. So it's anti-Semitic rhetoric that hate me. They call me the mountain Jew. And put my name beside a Mountain Dew can. Or on it. And mock me for the star of David. And say, oh, he's the mountain Jew. Oh, Brother Riley, I'll tell you, I, I don't know how, how, you don't know how they talk about you. They talk about you. You want to know what kind of power is inside you? Go to an airport and just suddenly speak out, Jesus, Jesus, watch what happens to the crowd around you. You could say Buddha, and you might get a, an eye turn, and that's about it. But if you say Jesus, whoa, fanatic. <laughs> fanatic? Do you know what a fanatic is? It's somebody who loves the Lord more than somebody else. <laughs> Peter was a fanatic. Jesus comes walking across the water. <laughs> they said, it's a ghost. The church believing in Halloween. It's a ghost. The church cowering against a ghost. I love that scene on The Chosen. When it comes to that house and they say, I've only got five bedrooms and one of them is haunted by the ghost of my dead grandmother. And Jesus said, who? Give me that one. <laughs> Give me that one. Just imagine all the disciples in the boat. It's a ghost. And Judas probably grabbed the mast and said, because <laughs> he was a thief. He thought it's come from me. He's going to tell them what they had seen around that Galilee. It was the, cir the heathen circle. It was the place where giants settled. That's why Jesus did all of his miracles, most all of them on the Galilee. He did battle with hell. He didn't do battle with Rome. It's not a military battle. It's a spiritual battle. Arrest demons and holding them down taking hold of demons put them on the ground take your spiritual foot and crush their head and don't even spare though they might be dead step on demons kick devil butt we're stepping on demons Kicking devil butt. Come on, say, I'll kick the devil's butt. I'll kick the devil's butt. Come on, I dare you say it. I'll kick the devil's butt. I kick the devil's butt. Here we go. Oh, march, 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 march. Stepping on demons. Come on, help.
help me now. March, 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 stepping on demons. One more time, say. March, 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 stepping on demons. Oh, march, 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 stepping on demons. Oh, I'll kick the devil's butt. 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 Can't you see it? Parents reach over to their children, holding their ears. Oh, listen at that man. He said, kick the devil's butt. Don't listen, baby. Don't listen. Don't listen. You better look at the cartoons they watch. And all the time in this modern generation, in those institutions we call schools, they're letting drag queens come in to our children and teach them all how to be fools. Confusing their minds, confusing their life, taking their future away. Drag queens dragging them straight down to hell and saying it's okay to be gay. We kick the devil's butt. The devil's butt. Kick the devil's butt. Kick the devil's butt. wonder why I'm, I'm not on Facebook anymore. Well, if I can clear that up for you, it's because I'm under what seems like permanent review. Why? They had to send a reason. Would you like to know what it was? It was some ridiculous, asinine reasons. That means ridiculous. But the one, I like that. Do that again. Give me that ball. Wait a minute now, do it right now. They sent me this fourth reason. We screenshotted it because no one had ever seen this on social media. You know what the reason was? They said, you preach. You're talking about animal sacrifice in a religious setting. So what was that? I spoke of Isaac and Abraham and the mount Isaac was offered on and the substitute. And that's why they kicked me off. And to make that stick, they just found out a way to shut down every preacher that preaches on the blood because then you can't talk about the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's why I'm off Facebook. And when you try to contact them, you can't even contact them. So I'm just under permanent review. I'm telling you, my friend, the gospel that they know is the only thing strong enough to bring it all down. If you get Congress people saved, it's over. If you get 
state representative saved, then it's over. If Supreme Court justices receive Jesus, it's over. The gospel is the thing that kicks the devil's butt over that bluff. Come on. We kick the devil's butt. The devil's butt. The devil's butt. When we kick the devil's butt, the game is over. Game over. Somebody just kick the devil's butt. Come on. You know how the Rockettes do. In, the, in high school, we used to have those, all of the football team and the, the dance team would come out. They'd kick their legs and kick them this way, kick them that way. Imagine kicking demons on this side, on this side. Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, imagine kicking that spirit that's, that's throwing those bad thoughts in your mind 24 hours. Kick it out. Kick it out. Come on. You got to start kicking devil butt, man. You got to start doing that. Oh, prophet, you're too crude in your speech. I don't think that I'm crude enough to deal with this generation. I think we live in the greatest potential generation we've ever seen. I believe the youth of this generation is the next Apostle John's, Peter's, Andrew's. I think that's it. I think, I think there's gonna be another Jesus freak revolution. Freak out. Jesus freak a revolution say it with me like this freak out oh I think there's gonna be another Jesus freak a revolution ow freak out yeah I think there's gonna be another Jesus freak revolution freak out More cowbell, baby. Freak out. Come on, come on, say it. Freak out. You wasn't ready for this. Freak out. Freak out. <laughs> Freak out. Mm -hmm. A freak. Jesus revolution, freak out, Jesus revolution, freak out, the Jesus revolution is the solution. Shelby, look at me. Come on, Shelby. Do that, do that thing you do, man. 
Come on. A freak out. Everybody do your thing now. Come on. Come on. Oh, freak out. Jesus revolution. Gonna freak out. Yeah. Jesus revolution. Gonna freak out. Everybody, come on. Now, get your freak on. Get your freak on. Yeah, get that freak on. Freak out. Give me that low beta. There's going to be another Jesus revolution. For it's the only real solution. The church is going to have to get ready for revival. And fight a good fight and not just survival. We're going to be Jesus freaks. We're going to be Jesus freaks. We're going to be Jesus freaks. Long hair, dyed hair, pierced tongues. We're going to be Jesus freaks. We're going to be Jesus freaks. Coming out of every nation, tribe and tongue. Freak out. Freak out. Is, don't you? It's the sound of freaking out in the middle of church. It's the sound of freaking out in the middle of church. Yeah. It's the sound of freaking out in the middle of church. I'm gonna freak out. Yeah. Freak out. Freak out. Come on. Come on. I dare you. I dare you. stupid just freak out freak 
count. He did, didn't he? Oh, yeah. For 38 miles, David freaked out when he brought in the Ark of the Covenant. He danced for 38 miles. You got something? We're about to stop, huh? Give me double time on the congas. Ready? Go. Come on. Come on. Four. Come on, Tommy, join in. She looked at Roxanne. She said, I'm freaking out, Roxanne. That's why I said oh, that. wait just a minute. We're going to do something today. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. What a day. What a day. Who says church can't be fun? That is a lie. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know. What was wrong with that? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Mink Kelly was about to get our 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 old tassel boots on when you was talking about kicking. We you know we used to be in the um, in the school. Well, I was in the the color guard, but we got to you know participate in different things and and all. We got to have the. No, we did. We didn't even have. When I started, we didn't even have a band. Yeah, we yeah. Well, that's true, but we didn't even have a band. We had a, a record player coming out of the loudspeaker. <laughs> so I mean, that was back when. So you know, thank God I didn't walk to school uphill. You know, both ways. So I snuck and drove. So <laughs> all right, we're not gonna get on that. We have put together or I say we, as in I asked for it, and John uh, got it together, a, uh, a recap of 2023, even though we're into 2024, but we want to show you and the, uh, our, our online synagogue, Cyber Synagogue, we want to show them what you're giving and what our partners made possible last year. And, you know, I didn't think about this. And Kayla brought this to my attention. Do you know everything was done without receiving one special offering? Do, think about that. That's the blessing of the Lord. It was done without having to say, oh, we're going to do this, so we need a special offering. It wasn't, it wasn't done that way. It was done out of your giving, the ministry's giving, because we're tithing the tithe. But the blessing of the Lord is a, I, I, it just, it, when we ran the numbers, I just, I had to go down the hall shouting. I knocked on everybody's office door saying, look, look at this, look at this, shout, shout with me. 